I actually do take the time to get to know people, have real conversations. If I can meet them in person, I try to meet them in person. And I think that's what sets you apart because right now there's so much information. Welcome to the High Voltage Business Builders, a show where we interview entrepreneurs growing and scaling their income through e-commerce and showing you the path to make your first or next million. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the High Voltage Business Builders. This is Neil, and I have here a very special guest. We were just laughing here as we got on board of this call about how long it has been since we connected, but in actuality, we've not talked face-to-face, which is going to sound really weird, but that is the internet world we live in today and social media, and we've revolved around each other in a community and um, obviously seen a lot of life indirectly uh, through each other's eyes. And so we're going to talk today about what Tarlise is doing. Tarlise, welcome to the call. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm excited. So you've been very busy doing a lot of podcasts lately, you said, over 20. What is it you've been talking about so much? (laughs) So my brand is Body Brains Bank Account. I've recently rebranded it to Body Brains Bank. But I talk about, uh, it's so fun. So the reason I I decided on that brand was because I like talking about a lot of stuff and I wanted to kind of keep it in a, a container. And so sometimes it's about health and wellness. Sometimes it's about mindset and sometimes it's about money. But because I have that brand, it doesn't seem so all over the place. So it really depends on what the host wants to talk about. But it's been so fun because at the end of the day, they all correlate with each other. If you're out of whack with your body, your mindset's probably not great. If you're out of set with your mindset, your business probably isn't doing that well. And so they really are like a little ecosystem, if you will. Yeah, so much is revolved around, at least in my opinion, the health and wellness aspect of your your mind and your mental prowess. Uh, and business will follow. And that really is where you put your time and activities, um, as I like to talk about. So let's talk a little bit about these things for you. What is it you've been doing in time? And then we can dig into some of the activities you've been doing. What What is it you've been up to for the last, say, decade or whatever? Oh, decade. <laughs> well, oh, hmm. But I got online about 13 years ago, and I came from the mortgage industry, commercial finance, and I started teaching people how to get their brand out online. And so I started with Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook, and I was teaching anyone. I just wanted to get out there. I was like, hey guys, I'm selling stuff. Do you want to have me teach you as well? And so I'd learn something. And literally the next day I'd go online and I would show people how to do it. And so people started coming to me for that reason, coming to me asking, how'd you get your brand online? Or I see you're selling something. How'd you do that? And you know, 10 years ago, there wasn't as easy of a conversation able to happen. You know, Messenger wasn't really a thing back then necessarily. And live streams, you know, there were live streams, but you couldn't do it straight through Facebook. And a lot of things have changed. And so I was finding these fun, quirky ways for people to build a business online. And then people just started interviewing me and asking me, you know, I launched my first Instagram course eight years ago. And so it kind of it started out as social media and business. And now that I've worked with thousands of people, it's kind of evolved into like a more holistic approach. People think they're coming to me for social media or business, but really we're talking about your mindset and your health and your family and your faith. And so it's turned into this big, huge thing (laughs) that really started with me just trying to sell health and wellness products online. You know, (laughs) it's so funny how it's evolved. Yeah. And business is an evolution, right? An evolution of your brand and of your person as you evolve and you have been evolving as a person since I've known you uh, and have been, obviously you've been moving around a lot lately in the world. I'm still kind of finding your place. Um, last I heard you were uh, out um, East more of where we are. I'm in Missouri, but where are you landing now? Where, where is life leading you in the next steps? I am. Cr- so I've been in California most, or I'm almost 44. So 40 plus years of my life. I've been in California and um, about a year and a half ago, I came to Illinois. And so I'll be here for a little bit. I'm going to go back to California and then I think I'll end up in Nashville. You know, the cool thing is because I can work Mm. from anywhere, as long as I have an internet connection, you know, I don't have kids, I don't have any external commitments. And so as long as I have an internet connection, I can do business anywhere. And so it's, it's kind of a a catch 22. I have so many options and I can kind of do anything, but you know, I really would like to settle because right. I was just talking to a friend recently and I've lived in, I think, 22 different cities, you know, over the past 10 years. And every six right. months, I'll find somewhere different yeah. and I kind of move up the coast of California. And, and it's fun, but eventually I'm like, I think I'm going to have to pick a spot and stay there for a little bit. 
I guess. I don't know. Maybe I, I don't have totally to totally understand that. <laughs> yeah. In my IBM days, we refer to it as I've been moved um, because we were constantly moving all the time. And in our first decade of marriage, we moved about 10 times, actually close to 10 uh, in about nine years. So I understand that because with the internet and the life you can have, you can decide a lot of places, you can change places. And that's what's cool. Uh, about having the freedom to choose those kinds of things. But obviously, th- that was led on a path of you waking up your health and wellness and, of course, going through that and obviously becoming a brand and building a brand online. What are some of the things, you know, the three steps or whatever that you could give somebody who's like, okay, I want to build a brand or I'm developing a brand and getting it into the social media space? What do you normally tell people they should start with? So it's very interesting. I've had this conversation a lot lately. People are looking, or not everyone, but most people that come to me, they find this idea and they're like, how can I make money off of it? I just need to make money. I want to build a business. But they forget the, do you actually like this? (laughs) Is this going to burn you out when you're doing it? (laughs) You know, can you see yourself long term? Like, I understand the making money aspect of it. But my number one step is find something that you actually find some joy in. Because if not, you're going to find yourself being resentful. You're not going to want to put the effort into it. You know, when I was teaching Instagram, people would start all these accounts, I'm going to start a cooking account and one for my friend or you know, one for my kids, and they start all this stuff. And and then they get overwhelmed and they're like, I don't even want to do this. I thought it was going to make money and it's not, you know, I don't see a profit yet. So, and then they leave their accounts and it's like a ghost town. And so I always tell people, sounds good. I know you might have FOMO, you know, you might have that fear of missing out because other people are doing it. But do you really want to start that e-com store? Do you really want to start doing live streams every day? Or are you just doing it because everyone else is? And so if I could go back to the very beginning, I'd be like, what do I find joy in? And granted, business isn't always yeah. joyful, but what is something that you could see yourself actually pouring into and wanting to do? Because regardless of if you believe in the universe or law of attraction, any of that stuff, where your energy flows, that's where the attention is going to go. And so if you are having Absolutely. to force yourself to do stuff or going, Oh, I got to I got to create content today. People can tell. And if you're having to sell just to make money, <laughs> if you think people can't notice that or don't pick on, up on that, you are being naive right now. Because if you're just pushing something yeah. because you have to, it's way different. Don't you think? Yeah. I mean, I see a lot of people do that where it's like, now they're in the crypto space or now they're in that, but then it fizzles out. And, you know, I've had my Body Brains Bank account brand for, I don't know, just over a decade now. And the reason that I think I've been able to stick with that is because I'm just making sure I'm talking in all those categories. And it's actually fun to me. Like I have an Evernote with probably a thousand topics right now that I could talk about because every time I find joy or I'm in yeah. a conversation, I go oh, and I pick up my phone and I'm like, oh yes, I need to do that. you know. And so I just, I don't know. I, that would be my number one thing. I know you said three things, but it's like find something that you actually want to pour into and that you actually yeah. see yourself doing longer find term interest. than just a yeah. couple months. And then also- yeah. Burnout um, is a big component of it. Yeah. And also, you know, a lot of people forget about the community. I think one thing that I've really had success with um, for as long as I've been online is I'm pretty tight with my community. Like I know, I know Susie likes sunflowers. I know Joey's son has, you know, a purple cow that he carries around. Like I know these things about them and I remember them. And it just makes a difference. People can tell. I mean, you and I were talking, we've been connected for eight years, but we've never talked like this, but we feel like we know each other. And so many people tell me that because I actually do take the time to get to know people, have real conversations. If I can meet them in person, I try to meet them in person. And I think that's what sets you apart because right now there's so much information and your feed is just constant. You know, you're being berated by so many things one after another. It's like, what does set you apart? How can you connect with your community and provide value? And I've done that over and over. And so it's like, no matter what I'm promoting or what I'm sharing, people resonate with it because they're like, I trust Tarlise. I've been following her for long enough. If she says it's good, she hasn't steered us wrong so far. And so I trust this and I'll, you know, I'll believe it. And so I think that's another thing is, yes, you know, you can have your business, but who are you talking to? Is your community resonating? And they can tell when you're just pitching stuff because you just want, you know, another number or another another sale. Money. Yeah, it can yeah. smell blood in the water. People want to buy. They don't want to be sold. I mean, that's a very classic phrase, but it's still very much true in the psychology of buying. 
and that's one of the things about attraction marketing and social media that I think you've done well, which is why I wanted to, to have this conversation with you. And we've had an opportunity to have this conversation because, yeah. honestly, we haven't had like an instigator that said, well, let's jump on the phone and have this call. I know. It probably could be because I've been married for the last decade and I don't have a lot of calls with single women yep. uh, that could get me into trouble. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Yeah, all right. Well, you just never know in today's age, right? Um, things can go sideways fast. But the this aspect of growth and, and obviously doing something you love and people get afraid of that at times. I've heard people say, well, what if I get burnt out? What if it's my passion? What if I don't have that passion anymore? Because, well, I'm doing it now. And I, I think I see that backwards. How do you see that? Like, do you have people who ever approach you with that? Because I've had them say that to me. It is interesting because I have never had a problem with pivoting or with letting something go and doing something different. And so it's interesting because like you said, most people are like, you got to have passion. If you don't, don't be afraid to reinvent yeah. yourself. A lot of people are so worried about like, well, I was just exactly. promoting this. What are they going to think if I do that? It's like, well, if if you feel it and you got the calling and it's something that you believe that you could be good at, why not? You know, it's like... Failure to me, it's, I don't ever feel like I've really failed at things. I feel like I've learned a ton of lessons. I feel like I can teach from learning. it. And, yeah. you know, it's all a learning right. experience. And I've failed at a lot of things. I've had things flop. I've, I've thought, oh, this program's so amazing and seeing crickets, you know, it, it happens. But then I yeah. just pivot a little bit and it's like you're constantly, you know, course correcting and seeing what it is for you. But, I think that if the opposite of what I said earlier is a lot of people stick with stuff just because they feel that they need to. And you're yeah. the only one that knows when it's time to, you know, call it quits. Don't get caught up in what other people are thinking. I, you know, for, for many, many yeah. years, I was so self-conscious about like, what does my hair look like? And uh, I had to have the perfect notes on my phone and making sure everything was prim and proper. And then I realized, People want to resonate with a person. They want to have a conversation. And you said like, you know, people don't like to be sold. I think one of the main things too is I enjoy selling and I am not, I don't find shame in selling. I don't, I, I have right. no shame in selling. I have no shame in promoting myself because I believe in what I have to offer. And so if you catch yourself having, feeling self-conscious or doubting yourself or not having the confidence, sit down and write like, Give yourself some affirmations, write down all the positive things, ask for testimonials. You know, you might see on my wall every once in a while, I'll say, hey, why do you follow me? Or what's, a, what's a, you know, if I could teach you one thing, what would you like to, to have me teach you? Yeah. And although I don't weigh heavily on that, like if someone said, oh, mm -hmm. I don't find anything from you or that I wouldn't take it personal, but sometimes you get in your own little world and you have your own idea of how people perceive you and people perceive you differently. And so don't be afraid if you're feeling, you know, maybe you don't have confidence or you're not sure or that you don't have passion right now, go ask some people, hey, why do you follow me? Or why are we connected? What's one thing you've learned from me? Just do some like market research and you would be amazed at the answers that people give you. You know, there's a guy that I yeah. connected with recently. He's making about a million dollars a month, I think about. And I got on a call with him and he said, I've been following you for years. And I was like, what? You've never commented on anything. I did not even know you fall. Yeah. I didn't know we were connected. I had zero idea. I didn't right. know he'd ever seen a post of mine. I was in the dark. I had no idea. And so it's like sometimes you get so focused on this one audience or these people you're trying to impress and you forget that there's a whole other plethora of people that them. are enjoying yeah. you, yep. that have been following you for years. You know, and even if you're right. watch or watching or listening to this and you're like, but people haven't been following me for years. I'm brand new. I guarantee there's some people from your past or some people that you know that could give you some insight. Yep. And even if you feel the opposite of it, at least you're getting that like third party perspective. Do, have you ever gone through that where you're like, I'm in a rut or I don't know what I should focus on. Let me go talk to Susie. Hey, Susie, you know, do you ever do that? Because I, I catch myself probably every six months just going, why are you following me now? Or why are we, con not, I hate following, but why are we connected? What, what is it that makes you not want to hit I haven't done that unfriend. on a post personally, but what I found is that because I like to tease face, uh, Facebook particularly on the algos and determine whether or not they're going to try to ban me or community guideline me every once in a while, <laughs> yeah. um, that I get a lot of people in my inbox who are like, yeah, I really agree with what you're saying. And my response is I look over and I'm like, but I don't see you liking or commenting on my posts. Isn't oh yeah, well, they don't want other people to know 
what that they agree with what I agreed with. So their afraid family and friends on their Facebook feed will see that they liked something that I put out there that's always a little controversial yep. uh, to stir the pot. I call it conflict marketing. Um, I'm always kind of curating my audience by putting things out there that are just on the edge a little of what people think or what yeah. they say or what they would agree with. I don't know if you ever catch any of my feeds. I don't see you commenting or liking on mine, by the way. I'm okay. just giving trash. Yeah, get on there and start clicking on them all right now. Right. I'm going to watch it. But I do get that. I get people in my inbox being like, hey, yeah, this is cool. Or I really agree with this or whatever. And I actually get those about two to three times a week. Yeah. But then I notice they just they don't comment or like on it. So there there is people in your ecosystem. And it just depends upon what you're doing, who you're talking to, and that no like trust and relationship, which is, I think is what you're talking about here. Yeah. You know, do they know you? Do they like you? Do they feel like they can trust you? And then all of a sudden, you know, they say, hey, I've been watching you for like the last two or three months and listening to your podcast or whatever. Can we talk? Like, it, great, and cool. it was Let's so crazy. Chat. Like, just like I said, this guy's like, I've been following you for years. And I'm like, what? Like, this is someone I look yeah. up to. And I would like, if my business yeah. looked anything like his business, I would be like, oh. And so it's just interesting because <laughs> you just right. don't know. And, you know, a lot of people, no. you know, I've, like I said, I've worked with thousands of people at this point. A lot of people will say, I didn't get any likes on my post, so I deleted it. Or, I, you know, that video didn't get very much reach, so I got rid of it. Yeah. It takes one person to change your entire life or trajectory. It takes one person to make a decision. They could have a million followers or one person that has another one follower that connects you. It's like one connection. And I I try to reiterate that all the time with my clients is because who cares the reach? Things come back, just like you said, they come back up in the algorithm months later and someone else sees it. And so if you're worried or you're deleting it because only two people commented, there's a lot of people watching you that maybe Maybe they don't feel comfortable with themselves or just like you said <laughs> maybe they're like i don't want people right. to know i like this politician or that person you I know and hey, so- yeah, I, I kind of agree with what he's saying but boy i don't want to <laughs> right? get you know flamed they're like i don't my want friends. my friends knowing and that it. happens quite a I don't care. I like those friends have lost me already. They've disappeared in the algo or they've got unfriended and some or they unfriended me. I don't even know. I don't care. I don't even know how many followers I have. Yeah. You know, it just gets down to the point. So who is the one person for you? Like, has there been a one person or a recent situation where you have your your one person? One person that I like look up to or follow or. Yeah, they all that came out and was like, I mean, I mean, this gentleman you mentioned a minute ago, but has there been one person instrumental in any change in the point of your life here in the last few years that's been pretty dramatic for you? Yes, but I haven't announced a partnership with him yet, which I'm going to soon, huh. so I won't say oh, okay. who it is. <laughs> I won't say who it is. That was not but, a setup. I did not know no, that. Just to no, I know. Um, but, but yes, there is someone and he, yeah. like I said, it's like, I wouldn't say celebrity style because I don't care about celebrities, but I'm just like... This person's business is just amazing. And I have a call with him actually tomorrow. Good timing. And we're going to kind of announce that we're working together a little bit. But um, yes. Well, sure. We should have waited till next week. Then we could have announced it on this podcast. (laughs) But like, just like I said, you you just (laughs) never, you just never know. You never know. And you know, one thing about me though, one thing about me though, is I, I do, kind of the opposite of what a lot of gurus believe. You know, people will say like, don't share your personal life. Don't share, no one wants to see your animals and, you know, keep it, keep it on in your niche and keep it, you know, on topic. And I do the opposite of that. I'm always sharing my personal life. I I, I share the good and the bad, you know, I'm like, we did a hundred grand this month. I'm negative in my bank account. Like I've shared all of it. I remember when I I first got started, I sold my bed to buy a network marketing kit. I didn't have any money. I was negative. I was going through a horrible time in my life. My mom had just passed away and I was just in, mm. like if there was rock bottom, I was below rock bottom. It was horrible. And I sold my bed and slept on an air mattress so that I could pay for a kit to join a network marketing company. And during that time, you know, one of my mentors is like, do not tell people this. No one's going to want to join you. And I was like, but why? This is where I'm at. I'm, I see yeah. a problem. I have a solution. I'm going to share with people where I'm at. And that my business took off. I catapulted. I made it to like the top ranks in the company. People loved it because they, they resonated because they're like, I resonate with that. I'm not doing well right now. I I do have things I can sell. I, I can make this work. You know, I'm not, it's not as bad as I thought it was. And so I remember my mentor at that time was like, do not post that. And I was like, sorry, I'm doing it. And that became kind of my story almost. It's created a part of your origin story, like the superhero totally. story of Tarlise. And I was like, I'm what, not embarrassed of that because that's who I like am. like 1234, right? Yeah. And what? Like with the significance of 1234. Yes. Yes. Like I see you post the significance of 1234, right? I, yep. I, I'm paying attention. Yes. What? 
tell us about that, like in relevance to exactly what you're saying right now, right? So it, it was around, or it was 15 years ago I've been doing, or I've been doing it for 15 years. But when I was in one of my darkest spots, like I mentioned, my mom had passed away. I just was like, I got to get out of this. I got to do something. And so I just made a decision and I picked 1234 because it was in the middle of the day. I was just like, just pick something in the middle of the day. So I picked 1234. And at that time, I wasn't setting it on my phone because it was a while ago. I had a old school alarm clock mm. and I put a alarm to go off every day at 1234 and I would stop and just give gratitude. I'm grateful for this water. I'm grateful for my dog, whatever it was at that moment. And I've stuck with that every single day. I have not missed a day in 15 yeah. years. I've been in the hospital before. I've been speaking on stages. I've been yeah. on podcasts and I always go, hey, hold on. I got to take a moment for gratitude. It doesn't matter where I'm at, who I'm with, whatever. But the cool thing is that that has evolved so much. People, other people have gotten tattoos. You know, I have a tattoo right here. Other people have gotten tattoos. I have a testimonial folder on my phone with over a hundred testimonials. Um, one of my friends said he was recently at an event and he said, I was at an event and he said, multiple people in the room had their alarm go off at the same time. And we all looked at each other and I was like, shut up. He said, all That's of us amazing. Had, he said, all of us had our 1234 alarms because you told us about it. And I was like, that is so awesome. So recently someone on a podcast that goes, really if you could cool. be known for one thing, what would it be? And I said, honestly, it would be for having people stop for a minute and give gratitude. And the cool thing about having the tattoo is every time I go in public, not every time, but Eight times out of 10 that I go in public, someone will go, what's that about? Like I went to the supermarket the other day and the cashier's like, what's that about? And I told her. And so I have this opportunity to share gratitude with people. And I'm like, it doesn't matter what is happening. You know, my dad died recently. And even the day of the funeral, I stopped and I was like, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for our memories together. I'm so grateful for my family. And like, regardless of what's happening there's always something. It could be small, it could be big. And so that's really important to me, but it has become part of who I am. I have a, a 1234 journal coming out. Like I've, I've evolved it because now there's so many other people involved and you know, people message me that I had never even talked to. I'll see messengers pop up. Hey, 1234, you came to mind. And I'm like, that's hi, I've never spoken to you, but that's cool. That you know? And so it's just cool. like, it started, branding. Out, <laughs> it started out so random and like it's evolved yeah. into something much, much bigger. It's pretty cool. So that is so cool. So, all right. Sideball question. You ready for this one? Yes. When are we going to see you on the Joe Rogan experience? So I was on Fear Factor. <laughs> I was on Fear Factor with Joe yes. Rogan. And it's so funny because yes. I was like, how cool would that be if somehow, some way I could get I could talk to him again yeah. and we could talk podcast. about I know I was thinking we about could this. talk about that experience. Someone brought that up the other day. They go, you should put that on your vision board because you're really good at manifesting. But I was like, how cool would that be? Because that was in 2000. So it's been 22 yeah. years. Yeah. But he was a wow. he was a fun guy. And who would have known mm -hmm. that he would go from like this fear factor host to who he who he is and what he's doing now. But you know, I I love Big coming difference. on these podcasts because everyone is so different and the conversations go so many ways, but it's like, you just never know who's going to listen to it and get that one little snippet. Or maybe people don't like it and they're like, hey, don't have that lady on again, Which whichever way it rolls. It's just fun to be able right. to talk to new people and like just be a human and have some interaction. You know, being online is fun, but when you're constantly behind the, the computer screen, it gets a little boring. Let's be honest yeah. here. You know, no doubt about it. Well, and be, where we live, I don't have that problem because I can just go out and spend a couple hours chainsawing or cutting trees or working right. on the property or doing something outdoors yep. to stress relief or whatever, uh, or cooking on the grill. So I don't have that problem out where yeah. I live anyways. But yeah, we should figure out a way to make that happen. Like, get a, get a, get a, it's so funny. You're the second person to bring it up. And I was like, sounds pretty good. I'm sure I could figure out a well, way. <laughs> see, I just have self interest. I just want to know somebody who, who's directly, I know, who's I been know. on the Joe Rogan podcast. That's, that's my goal. I, I don't even want to be on the podcast. I just want to know somebody who's been on it. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he, he actually has done something well in terms of uh, branding. And yes. that's something I think you've talked a little bit about today. And that is staying relevant to the topics and the currents and things you're having fun about, or even taking current aspects of today's, uh, you know, current events 
All right. Who hasn't been paying attention a little bit to Twitter and the yep. situation there yeah. and who didn't pay attention to Slapgate a few weeks ago. Right. And had some fun with that. Yeah. Um, all of those things you can turn into media marketing and brand awareness for yourself, can't you? Absolutely. And it, it's just so interesting because using Joe Rogan as an experience, it's like something used to be popular and one thing happens and it they come back. And so it's just interesting, like yeah. what's what's you know, my mom used to always tell me, oh, I go, you know, I'd say, oh, this is so cool or so popular. And she's like, honey. That was cool 20 years ago or whatever, you know? And so it's interesting to see <laughs> what things are, you know, going viral or becoming relevant. Like right now on TikTok, all the cool songs from when I was in high school are now being used. And I was like, oh, yeah, let's do this, you know? And so it's like, yep. you, if I you like love something, it, right? It's so cool. I'm like, if you like something, that's the reason Body Brains Bank has done well for me is because I love talking about those subjects. I could talk about them all day long. It makes me happy. It's exciting. There's nonstop topics, you know, unlimited topics. And so what's that thing for you? Is it gardening? Is it cooking? Is it, you know, Smurfs? It doesn't matter what it is. There's a niche for it. I guarantee you. There's someone that likes what you like. Well, it's funny you mentioned that, the, the TikTok thing, because I saw that the other day and I'm like, oh, this is like my jam. Like, who knows this? <laughs> and my 13 year old heard it and she's like, what is that? So I found the local station that plays all the movies. I'm 46. So yep. all of the same sort of genre, uh, Green Day and everything was popping off. And she she was driving the truck the other day. She's learning to drive on the back roads out here. So she was taking me around to the trash and around the hauler and she's driving the big truck and she's having a lot of fun. And these songs are cranking and she's like, dad, what is this music? <laughs> like, <laughs> You're like it's going to be trending uh, well, on TikTok pretty soon, right? You just it watch; is. it's making a vintage comeback, right? Isn't Which it funny that it's vintage? I mean, You're that. like, what? I know. It's like I shouldn't say that word because all of a sudden I just felt like all monotone in in 1930s. It's so funny. So one last thing for us: if we want to get in contact with you and talk more about what you're doing and how to develop social media or maybe learn how to be better at it. Um, how do they get in contact with you? So my name is Tarlese. It's T-A-R-L-E-S-E. And that is all of my social media handles as well. So Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, anywhere, um, LinkedIn. And then also my website is tarlese.com. So you can find me at Tar- Luckily, it hasn't been a popular name. And so I was able to, you know, grab all of that. But um, yeah, you can, whichever yeah. platform you're on, if you type in my name. You'll find me there. Um, I have a really cool rebrand coming in the next month with my um, website, but it will still remain tarlise.com. Well, I'm excited to see this new venture coming up and figure out who I kind of got some ideas who it might be. So I'm curious to see what happens with that. So one last question. Are you on Twitter or off Twitter now that the whole thing has changed? Which which direction so, are you going? I, I've always been on Twitter, but I don't use it very often. Yep. Like I'll go there. I'll go right. there to see what's trending or, you know, I, I like to stay on top of trending topics because I have a social media group and I want to share trending things with them. But um, it's funny because I yeah. was just looking. My cover photo from there is from my Instagram course that I launched eight years ago. So I was like, I guess I should probably update my Twitter. Probably want to go. <laughs> uh, you saw mine the other day. I don't know if you, well, I did. I posted it. It's like I did two posts and I haven't posted in like oh, two years on yeah. Twitter easily. I let it go a long time ago. And it's like, you got 50,000% reach. I'm like, what? It's, That's something clearly changed because I had I, yeah. no reach before. I had 9,800 followers and I couldn't get, like they shadow banned me. They did. And they totally jacked my account and I could get nobody to like, comment or follow on Twitter. So I just gave up. I'm like, well, crap, that's not going to work. It'll be interesting um, to see where that, where Twitter goes now that, you know, it's, be it's change of ownership. But, you know, I went to, I got to have a private tour of SpaceX and go like actually see behind the scenes and SpaceX and stuff. It was so cool. So I'm like, even if you don't like him, the operations he has going, I'm like, this is pretty massive. This is pretty crazy. What's, what's, you know, the potential, yeah. like how ginormous these things are. I was like, wow, this guy's definitely up to something. So it'll be interesting. It's interesting, though, that that, that, that topic just reminded me of something I saw from one of my friends earlier who, who does tend to lean a little bit more on the, the political progressive yeah. spectrum. And they yeah. drive a Tesla and they're all about climate change and this kind of stuff and how pissed off they were. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, wait, you're driving his car, but you're mad at him because he wants the speech. I don't know. Yep. Interesting world we live in in social it media today. Sure it's a fun is. thing to navigate. And sometimes <laughs> you need someone to help you. Uh, navigate. And if that's a person uh, that could be for you, go to see Tarly's folks. Check her out online. I encourage you to do it. Hey, thanks for coming on. I'm honored oh, and I'm so glad we had this time to spend together. Thank you.
If you like this episode, please share it with people you think will enjoy it as well. Thank you for listening and be sure to tune in next week for a brand new episode of High Voltage Business Builders. 